We are back, you are chatting with John P. Today, I'm going to be talking about some of my biggest watch regrets. That is things that I've done or not done in the past when dealing with watches or my personal watch collection or Delray watch. By the way, make sure to check out delraywatch.com where we have so many cool, interesting watches uh, that the other John as well as Federico have brought in through the door. Um, they're really impressing me with some of the pieces we've been getting in. And thank you guys so much for being there with us through this entire journey. And speaking of this journey, you know, I've been, I've been collecting watches, not just, uh, you know, a dealer you know, here and now, but I've been collecting watches for, you know, almost 12 years now. So, you know, I know for some of you, that's, uh, I'm sure some of you are going to say in the comments below that you have uh, shoes that are, are older than that. And I, I certainly understand that. But, um, you know, I think it's fair to say that within the last, you know, 12 years, I've, I've really gotten pretty deep into it. In fact, even when I was uh, in, in undergrad, uh, one of my professors would, would always come over and see that I was looking at watches on the internet. And I think probably his words were something like, uh, you're not going to make a career out of watches or, um, you know, you're not going to make any money from watches. Now I kind of have uh, the last laugh, I think. Uh, Ken, I think, was his name. So if you're watching, I, I think I, I showed you something different. Uh, but nonetheless, there's some things that I probably should have done um, looking back in retrospect. And in, in the greater scheme of things, guys, I mean, while they are regrets, I really don't care too much. Um, but there's certainly things that, yeah, looking back, probably would have done or not. So first, 10, 11 years ago, I got into my watch collecting journey in vintage. Now, when I was just starting out, vintage was not that popular right there were vintage watch collectors but they were a little more nuanced they were a little more into the the subtleties and the thrill of the chase but vintage watches 10 11 12 years ago were not close to the prices they are today especially when we start talking about rolex and now omegas and i had so many vintage watches that i just started picking up and adding to my collection mostly because as a new collector a very young collector you know in my uh my late teens early 20s it was just it was just more reasonable and practical at least i felt like i was getting a better deal and considering that vintage was pre-owned and the pre-owned modern market was just not that big it allowed me to maybe you know if i wanted to get into something else then i would be able to trade on the forums the different watch collector forums at the time i mean this is when watch you seek they barely had any members i was on there in the rolex forum as well time zone not so much i always thought time zone was um, just not quite for me, but you know, I got into vintage and because it just wasn't that popular and the prices hadn't really started climbing yet, I sold off or I ended up getting out of most of my vintage watch collection at that time. And I had so many cool things, different Rolexes, some Pepsi GMTs and you know, nothing too crazy, but in, you know, that kind of Rolex and under category, but certainly some interesting things now that fetch several, several, several times the price. And so looking back, I kind of wish I held on to the vintage collection. Um, and, but I've gotten more into it. I mean, today, uh, you know, a modest selection, um, on the wrist, but a, a vintage, uh, IWC signed by Turler. Let's see if I can get that. There might be a bit of a, a glare, um, but signed by Turler. Uh, so I, I do really enjoy vintage and that's where I started. Really wish I kept a lot of my collection, but thankfully and luckily, you know, being in the watch industry, I get to kind of uh, scratch the itch in so many other ways, um, you know, here with Delray Watch. So next, another regret that I have. Now this one is, it, it's it's pretty wild. The FP Journe, FP Journe Elegant 48. When this came out, you know, maybe five years ago now, ish, Nobody wanted this, right? Battery powered FP Journe. FP Journe is known for their mechanical movements. It's known for the engineering. And even though FP Journe with this particular model, when it came out, you know, it was really novel. It was really advanced because you, you'd put the watch down and when you're not wearing it, it would, you know, conserve battery energy by not moving. And then you'd pick it up and it would know. And then it would, you know, kind of uh, speed back up for you. And it also had some modest water resistance as well. And there was some decoration on the movement but no one really liked this compared to now and I remember uh, OJ if you're watching this OJ from watch you want um, you know a friend of mine and he had offered he, he I don't think he could get rid of this back then this was you know probably four or five years ago he couldn't get rid of this and he offered this to me for I think like six thousand dollars and I wore it on my wrist for about a day and you know what I said ah, it's too big it's not for me it's 
you know, it's uh, basically battery powered. And looking at what Elegant 48s go for now, especially the new titanium one, I mean, these things are look like they're on Chrono 24 for $30,000. Go on the forums, you can catch the older ones a little bit lower, sometimes less, but good luck getting an FP Journe Elegant 48 in any variation right now. So looking back, I can't believe it. You know, pass that one up. Um, and, and I really would like to add the Elegant 48 to my collection now and that's one of these things right we as watch collectors we all have the little things that make us tick and it's one of those things where you know now that it's desirable coincidentally um you know i actually would really love to have one but at that stage and at that point it just kind of seemed like a quirky little thing that i i really wouldn't wear what do you guys think about the fp Jorn elegant uh, specifically the elegant 48 would love to hear it in the comments below the next one is through delray watch now i didn't totally uh have a say so in this because i i don't actually currently handle the trading you know federico and you know jacob and john and, and some of the others handle more of the uh the watch end of things i'm, I'm more on the business end and the, and the finance and, and things that kind of drive behind the scenes so you know i wasn't really part of the decision but we had an incredibly rare rare ed sheeran tudor black bay now this watch is so unbelievably rare ed sheeran had a limited amount of these produced for pretty much the team that ran his divide tour if you're familiar with ed sheeran then you know he's a you know pretty big rock slash pop star um certainly a a bit of a pop icon and <laughs> more than a bit of a pop icon a big pop icon and when we this this watch that we had pictured here it sold literally in seconds on our website and after the fact we were receiving so many emails of people that uh were willing to just keep paying more and more and more for this watch now i'm not you know advocating that we you know that we could have you know gouged anyone on this i was just blown away and shocked that so many people uh, across the world that were big ed sheeran fans wanted this so it would have been a really great option to maybe sack it away in the safe and hold on to it long term i know that if the person that bought this watching this is hearing this then you will be delighted to know that we received so many people that wanted this watch for their collection and from other dealers and we even had some of the watch uh, magazines and websites reach out to us that either wanted to use our photo or they wanted to add it so pretty blown away with that one but that's just something that comes with the territory you know you never know what's going to come uh through the door when you're trading watches and with that, I would like to say another regret I have is not getting involved in the watch industry soon enough. Like I mentioned my story uh, about in, in undergrad when I was kind of looking at watches during class, uh, kind of zoning out and, and tuning out and getting called out for it. You know, that was kind of always the dream, right? Man, if I could only just uh, play with watches all day, wouldn't that be cool? You know, that's the thing, right? As collectors, we don't always have unlimited access to watches. You know, you if you want to try on a watch and it's 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 a bit older or it's not produced anymore, you can't go to a boutique. Today in COVID, you still can't really go to a boutique depending on where you live. So you pretty much just have to buy things on the internet and then you get it and then maybe you wear it, you don't like it, you trade it. And so it was always, you know, one of, one of my dreams to be playing around essentially with watches all day and really get a feel for the types of watches that I like. And there was just no other way to do that and to really be that kind of a level of collector uh, without doing it every day and seeing these watches at volume. And so um, that's probably another regret that I have is just not getting involved soon enough because it's one of those things, right, where if you can do what you love every day, it doesn't really feel like working. And if you are interested in becoming a, a watch dealer, I put together um, a little bit of an instructional or a course, a link in the description below. We've had a handful, uh, qu actually quite a bit more than a handful of people that have signed up, but I get emails and comments and questions and messages on Instagram, the real John P from people um, that have kind of been with us through this journey and say, hey, how can I trade watches? And the reality is, you know, there is a proven method and there are steps and you can follow exactly what I did. And, and the reality is there's there are so many watches out there and the watch industry is growing every day. So I, I don't really even view it um, necessarily as any type of competition. So link in the description below if that is of interest to you. And lastly, I want to touch on this. And this is something I touch on quite a bit. And it's uh, a recurring theme in a conversation that I have with so many watch collectors, both that have been doing it for a while, as well as new to watch collecting. And that is 
quality over quantity. Now, the, 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 the regret is, you know, when I started out, I first kind of was dipping my toes in the water, so to speak. You know, I was saying, oh, I need a dive watch. I need a chronograph. I need this. I need a Rolex. I need an Omega. And you just start checking off these boxes for different things. And, you know, let's face it, you know, not all collectors are looking to, you know, put unlimited amounts of funds into a hobby, right? I mean, maybe you have other hobbies, maybe you have other responsibilities, maybe you're new to collecting, you know, that that's your business. But I always see, and when I say always, I frequently see people that amass this collection, right? We get emails every day at Delray Watch, and I look at them, I go through it, and I make sure to really study and, and learn what other collectors think and experience. And it's always the same thing, and it's so interesting to see it over and over again. Although unfortunate, so that's why I'm sharing um, kind of this advice with you here. People add too many watches to their collection because they, they wanted a blue dial, they wanted a green dial, they wanted this, that, and every variation, and then they end up with this large collection of watches where they could have consolidated it and been a lot happier with something a little bit higher of a tier. Now, it doesn't really matter where on that spectrum we're talking about the watches because there's always tiers, right? So I see it, you know, people will have a collection of Zinn and Squale and not saying anything bad about those watches, but really they're after that Rolex Submariner and they get to the point where they're like, well, now I need a Rolex Samariner and I've got this other collection of watches that I'm never going to wear if I get the Samariner. And then they end up selling all those on the forums or other places and then they take a bit of a loss. And I know that they would have been happier just with that Samariner because I hear it in the feedback. Now, that's just giving an example. I'm not saying that everyone should strive for the Samariner, even though it's certainly a superlative watch. Yes, I, I, did, <laughs> I did say that if you get the reference. Uh, but the same could be had at... at at other categories as well you know i see people have a collection of rolex and really they just wanted that a longunzona or the fp Jorn or something like from a carry voodoo line and or an independent and so i see it all the time and so i would and it, this is something i even experienced starting out so i would always recommend that you know instead of just adding more watches to the collection maybe have a just be a little bit cognizant of which watches you're adding and if it's really going to get you to the ultimate watch that you want because you know maybe you just have, you know, that one watch or, or the two watches until, you know, perhaps you can save up for the one that you want or you truly do find that one special watch that's on your radar. Let me know in the comments below if this is you or perhaps there's any other watch regrets that you have. I would love to hear it. I love talking with you about this. And also on Instagram, the real John P, I do uh, try to respond to as many questions and comments there as possible. And please don't forget to thumbs up, like, and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Guys, it's Monday. Got a few things to do here and wrap up in the office, but hopefully you all have a great week. You've been chatting with John P. Ciao.